Hey y'all, it's Stacy with SouthernBite.com. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're going to tackle what is arguably the most popular recipe on the website. And it also is great because it's one of my most favorite comfort foods. This is my ultimate chicken spaghetti. Now, like I said, comfort food to the max. It's gooey, it's cheesy, it's savory. It is just one of those things that I remember from my childhood. Is it healthy? Probably not. But you know, when we want comfort food, we're not really counting calories. Let me show you how easy it is to make this. I'm starting with about two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast. We're gonna cook that and shred it. The important thing to remember when we're doing that for any recipe that calls for you to cook chicken and then shred it is we wanna make sure that we cook that chicken low and slow. In my pot here, I've got water that I've heated just barely to where there are bubbles on the bottom of the pot. When we boil chicken at a high temperature, the outside gets tough and can often get dry. So a low and slow cook is gonna provide juicy, moist chicken that's nice and tender for our recipe. I will say though, a shortcut here. You know, a lot of stores sell shredded cooked chicken, maybe it's leftover from rotisserie chickens, in a package in the deli section. That's a great shortcut here. If you're gonna do that, you're gonna substitute what we're doing here for about four to five cups of shredded cooked chicken. My water's going here. I'm gonna season this a little bit. Now you can, I'm just using plain water now, but you could absolutely cook this in broth if you wanted to, and you can flavor this however you'd like. I'm just gonna do a little salt and some pepper just to make sure that we're adding flavor in layers here. We're gonna season this so that our chicken has a little bit of flavor to it as well. Again, this is about two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breasts. You could use an equal quantity of chicken tenders, chicken thighs, whatever you'd like. And then I'm just gonna put this right in our water here. And when you're using the boneless, skinless chicken breast like this, it's probably gonna take 15 to 20 minutes, but that time is gonna vary based on the exact chicken that you use. Just make sure you grab an instant read thermometer. We're gonna cook this to exactly 165 degrees. Let's talk about our pasta. I'm using one pound of thin spaghetti. Now you can certainly use another pasta if you'd like. Um, but since it's spaghetti, we're gonna use spaghetti, but you could use a short or a long pasta in an equal quantity. Now, a trick that one of my readers does, which I think is a great idea, is she'll actually cook the chicken, take that chicken out, and then cook the pasta in that same water to kind of infuse some of that flavor into the pasta. I've got a rolling boil here in a large pot of water. I'm gonna add some salt here because again, we wanna make sure that we're adding flavor in layers. The thing that you wanna keep in mind with your pasta is to check out the package instructions. Each brand is gonna require a little bit different cook time. And that's important because we just wanna cook this pasta just until it's al dente and maybe even a hair under that because this is all gonna get stirred together and then baked in the oven. So it's gonna to continue to cook. So cooking it a little less means we're not gonna have mushy pasta at the end. This is gonna go right in our water. It's important during this process that we stir the pasta a few times so that it doesn't all stick together. We wanna to make sure that we keep it separated. All right, so that's perfect. We want it still to have some chew to it so that we can ensure that it's not gonna to soften too much once it makes it into the oven. I'm gonna drain this and then we'll get started with the next step. All right, so my chicken is exactly 165 degrees. So I'm gonna take this out and put it on a plate here. Now what you're gonna wanna do is allow this to cool and then we're gonna shred it. Now you can do that any way you'd like, using your hands, two forks, some of those meat claws, or you can do what I'm gonna do, which kinda saves you some time because we can do this while it's still warm. I'm gonna toss these in my stand mixer with the paddle blade, turn it on, and it's gonna shred this all perfectly for our recipe. All right, so after a quick spin in the mixer, you can see this is shredded up perfectly and we didn't have to wait for it to cool and we didn't burn our fingers in the process. Once again, if you want to use a shortcut here, you could certainly replace this with four to five cups of shredded cooked chicken that you picked up from the grocery store, maybe like from the deli section where they have shredded rotisserie chicken, something like that. All right, let's put this together. Now I'm gonna use the pot that I cooked the pasta in just because it's one less thing that I have to clean up. In this, I've got 
a 10 ounce can of Rotel tomatoes. Now these come in different heat levels. I'm just gonna use mild. We're gonna add the tomatoes and the liquid that's in the can there. Next, I've got two 10 and a half ounce cans of cream of mushroom soup. Now sometimes I get questions about using the cream of mushroom soup. Either folks don't like the flavor or they don't like the texture. You can swap that for cream of mushroom soup if it's a flavor thing. But just keep in mind that this cream of mushroom is going to be a lot more savory than the cream of chicken. If it's a texture thing, you can actually use a fine mesh sieve. Pour this into that and kind of use a spatula like this to kind of press that through. That way you're catching all those chunks of mushrooms but still getting all of the liquid there just ways that you can kind of um, be able to get that great flavor without having the texture, if that's a thing for somebody in your family. I'm gonna turn the heat on low here because next we're going to add one pound of Velveeta cheese here. Sometimes I get questions about substituting this. I've just cubed this to make it melt a little bit faster. You know, nothing functions in a recipe quite like Velveeta does. You could probably swap this for American cheese. I'm not sure that that's really different enough. So we're also gonna add four ounces of cream cheese that I've chopped here. So you could substitute some of that Velveeta for some more cream cheese, um, but you're not gonna get that gooey, melty texture that you really get from Velveeta. Sometimes I'll get comments on the blog. People are like, well, I didn't like this recipe, but I'm not a big fan of Velveeta cheese. Well. Heads up, if you don't like Velveeta cheese, you should probably not make this. There are some other versions out there that you can find that don't include the Velveeta cheese. So if you're not a Velveeta cheese fan, you probably want to steer clear of this one. All right, I've just stirred this over low heat just till we get all of that cheese, cream cheese, Velveeta cheese melted. To this, I'm going to add one teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm also adding one teaspoon of onion powder. Just giving that a stir, getting it all combined. Now this is the point too where, and I didn't say this before, but if you're watching your sodium intake, you can opt for low sodium versions of the cream of chicken soup and some of the other ingredients. If you're not, this is the point where you would taste this and add a little salt and pepper. The reality is, is that I've never had to add salt and pepper because there's plenty of sodium in these products. To this, I'm going to add the chicken that we cooked and shredded earlier. It's just gonna go right in. And then we're just gonna give this a stir. Now that this is melted, I'm gonna turn the heat off. And now we're gonna add our pasta. Stir this to coat everything in that sauce and the chicken. All right, once this is all combined, we're gonna put it into our casserole dish. Now again, I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. And I've got a nine by 13 inch casserole dish here. We're gonna spray that with nonstick cooking spray. And a little trick that I always use when I'm doing this is if you've got a dishwasher full of dirty dishes, spray this, pull the, the door to the dishwasher down and spray it right over the door. That way if you have overspray, it's going there and not all over your countertop. Now we're just gonna transfer this right into our casserole dish. Then we're just gonna spread this kind of evenly in our dish here. Next, I've got about a cup of cheese. Now I typically use sharp cheddar cheese. I happen to have a cheddar cheese blend here. It's gonna work fine. If you don't have that, you could certainly use mozzarella or something else, but I think the cheddar cheese is a little more traditional for this recipe. I'm just gonna sprinkle this right on the top. And this is gonna go in our oven at 350 for 20 to 30 minutes. Everything's already cooked at this point. So the goal here is just to melt that cheese and get everything heated through. All right, after about 20, 25 minutes in the oven, you can see the cheese is nice and melted. You can serve this up with a simple salad. I love the convenience of those pre-bagged packaged salads from the grocery store because you can get them in tons of different flavors. Add that to this and supper's ready. It reheats great. It's great as a freezer meal. And it's just one of those dishes that just feels like home. You can find the full easy recipe by heading over to the website at southernbite.com and just search Ultimate Chicken Spaghetti. Y'all enjoy.